So as y'all know, I talked about the Bills and they had moved on from um <clears throat> the Bills moved on from Jordan Poyer, uh Mitch Morris, and um a couple people actually, a couple right receiver. I think they lost Hardy, uh they lost Siren Neal. A lot of the Bills is cleaning the house. They're they are they are cleaning the house up there right now. Uh however, Buffalo's known for spending money and um and getting the right guys, whether they're big name guys. If you got the production, they're gonna go grab them, right? That's just what it is. And I like that about the Bills. I really do. I like that about the Bills. If you got if you get production up out of there and you big name or not, they will spend that money to get your ass up there to Buffalo, period. I like that about that franchise. Now they're looking at the defensive end from uh the Cowboys and Dorrance Armstrong. Now, now you like Dorrance Armstrong. Listen, without him, Michael Parsons don't do what he do. It takes a whole defensive line from one guy to shine. Let me say that again, and that rhyme. It takes a whole defensive line for one guy to shine. Now, Dorrance Armstrong's on that defensive line. Helmut Von Miller, whew, damn, damn, <laughs> damn. I think that'd be, I. you know, I would like to hear from the Bills fans. It wouldn't tell me what y'all think about, you know, Dorrance Armstrong, the defensive end from Cowboys. Do y'all think he would fit? I think it's be a good fit up there. But, you know, look, y'all, that's just my opinion, though. You know what I mean? Y'all might feel different on that. Like, nah, I don't want him. I think we need this type of guy up there in Buffalo. We might need that, you know, whatever y'all think. But, you know. I like the fact y'all looking at DJ Chark. I talked about y'all needing another receiver um, because it just the inconsistencies. Y'all need a for sure number three. Right now, I would say y'all number three right now is Shakur. We'll say that he is, but there might be another guy that come in and take that spot. Now, y'all looking at DJ Chark. Um, he's been with four teams in four seasons. He bounced around. I know. We even know what we're getting up out of Chark, though. We know what we're getting up out of him for the Lions. He's a mercenary. He's a mercenary right receiver. He's bounced around for the money or wherever he's desired to be. But I don't think we've ever heard anything about DJ Chark being a bad teammate, no matter where he's been. And that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? When you move around to four teams in four years, no, that may not be necessarily good. But when you go to four teams in four years and you're a good teammate on all those squads, that is a plus. And the Bills could use another receiver, which would put the focus at running back going into the draft. Yeah, I think, I mean, you look, because you just never know. The position just takes a lot of ground to pound and to get ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? Y'all let go of Naeem Hines uh, from the Colts. Y'all just, you know, free agency. Look at what you thinking of. What y'all think of Trey Benson being with the Bills? I know I had him in my mock draft going to the Bills, but look, that's a, that's, that's a real thing, Trey Benson. And I know his stock just jumped up, but there might be like a guy like Cody Strader out there for y'all for the Buffalo Bills. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think he may fit. Like, if y'all can't, but he, like, Cody Strader might be one of the first running backs off the board. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's other names that they're popping up more than him, but Trey Benson, he's a he's a guy I like in Buffalo, and I had him going to Buffalo in my mock draft. Cody Schrader, he's another guy that runs hard. He's played for Missouri. I think he'll fit good in Buffalo. He'll look good up up there too. Um, there's a couple other guys too that I liked, and um, that I like right right receiver too. If the Bills want to go younger. And that guy would be none other than McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey, the ride receiver from Rice. Uh, I talked about him last night on the show. He's six two. He tested really good. Um, he's quick. He's quick. Um, in small spaces, he got really good. He's really elusive. Good escapability. Uh, this that is Christian, Christian McCaffrey's little brother, but he is taller than McCaffrey. He's a wide receiver um, that runs like a running back. Clutch as hell. He's clutch as hell. Let's not get that twisted. Uh, and he'll definitely be available for Buffalo. He'll definitely be available for y'all. Now, y'all want a receiver. 
he's not one of the big names. Let's just be honest. Luke McCaffrey, Luke McCaffrey is not one of the big names. First round. Um, who do y'all take in the first round? What is more valuable? I guess I would go offensive line because that's more valuable than a right receiver. But I believe Luke McCaffrey would be around. I mean, and if not like a Luke McCaffrey, uh, he would be ideal. But then you got like a Ricky Parcel from Florida, from the Florida Gators. Uh, they they can, was comparing him to Chris Olave. I, I don't really like comparisons, but look, like he he'll, he'll fit up there too at wide right receiver. The wide right receiver depth for rookies is crazy, and the only thing is, if you can get. DJ Chark at a right at a decent price, um, then I would go DJ Chark. You know what I'm saying? But if not, if DJ Chark is asked him for too much in the negotiations, go re, uh rookie, go rookie receiver. A lot of these guys are clutch. Um, look, I even threw Zay Weaver out there to y'all. Like, there's there's a lot of guys out there that's coming into the NFL that can play receiver and that got hands and good route running, good and um quick and small spaces elusive and that'd be perfect for buffalo that'd be perfect man so another thing with buffalo there <clears throat> the the trade that they got for a tremaine Edmonds going to a uh, buffalo they get one of them picks or something like that right they get you know how that goes um they got the number 133 pick in the draft right and they thought it would have been a, l- a little bit better because the bears are trash or whatever than that but look a draft pick is a draft pick. A draft pick, all draft picks are valuable. They just are. All draft picks are valuable, especially nowadays. The the training these young athletes uh, go through, everything that they know coming into the game, it's hard. The, the only thing you got to make sure is if the guy is smart enough to play. That's the only thing because a lot of these guys don't be knowing what what they're doing what schemes, what they're supposed to be running. And let's just be honest, a lot of them just come in pure talented and don't know shit, you know what I mean? So just trying to get a smart football player is the best route to go. You know they're going to be athletic and everything else. Like, you just you kind of know that, you know, all right? But 133 pick Buffalo, don't be upset about that. And I don't know if any Bills fans is or not, but don't be upset about that. An extra draft pick is an after, a, extra draft pick, bro. Like, it, it is what it is. Like, it's going to be valuable. Now we'll see what the 133 pick gets Buffalo. And then next season, when whatever y'all take with that, we'll see what y'all did and see how they how that pans out. You know what I mean? That's all I got to say. But look, man, I appreciate y'all coming through this morning, man, kicking it with me on the morning after. No plan B, baby. You gotta say it with the New Orleans voice. So if you're from New Orleans, please. Hit me up so I can get it on there, baby. Got to say, the morning after with no plan B, baby. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, hey, man, I appreciate y'all coming through, kicking it with me this morning, man. Look forward to it, man. Y'all already know Saturday's live, Shad, Sunday morning. Make sure y'all hit that uh, subscribe button and notification bell so when I drop some videos, you'll get updated on that. Peace. Wanna see Chuck and Chuck live with co-host Shad? Tune in and fans point of view. Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time. But in the meantime, in between time, enjoy the content. Don't forget to hit your notification bell for all updates. Thank you for watching.